have been back to that. So Fairberry and Mike McKinney, is that a marriage that's never going to end? <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I tell a lot of people I hate this place, and uh, I don't hate it, but it's just, uh, I, don't, I walk in here with a whole different attitude, and uh, it's like the only place I I really uh, I'm hard myself at, and I take it super serious, and I don't want to lose here. Just been, been very fortunate to have a whole lot of success here since I started mod racing. So uh, got my biggest career win here last week, and uh, hopefully we can just uh, get another one tonight. Now mod racing is interesting. It's one of those deals like if you're a big time super late mall guy and you kick everyone's ass, you're a badass. But it's like there's this debate, I guess you would call it, between who are the best modified guys. Even though they're all similar, there's a little body difference here, a little engine, a little tire. IMCA, UMP, USMTS, so this gets split up. Yeah. How do you see that? Uh, I don't know, so I, I've raced every single sanctioning body there is this year. And you did do the match race earlier in the year, USMTS yeah. versus UMP. Yeah, so I've raced, uh, I've raced UMP, obviously, IMCA on Davenport, Iowa, USMTS with Soda. I've literally raced every major sanctioning body this year, and they're all just as good. You know, every, every, uh, every sanctioning has really good competition. Everybody's got really good cars. Uh, obviously, you race on different racetrack. I truly don't think one's better than the other, you know. I mean, uh, you know, an IMCA guy would come in here and get their butt kicked. A UMP guy would go to IMCA and get their butt kicked. You know, it's just, uh, you're good. You, well, you, you almost kicked USMTS's butt. What, yeah. did you run fourth from the 22nd uh, to yeah, fourth, I think? Yeah, last with USMTS. I was in my car, though, in our tire, so it wasn't really a fair fair deal. And I, was, I won an IMCA race a couple weeks ago in Davenport, Iowa. And like I said, they're all just as good. They're all super competitive. It all just kind of based on what area you're in and, you know, what sanction there is. Um, you know, the USMTS, I, I feel like it's at the top just because they're a traveling series. Uh, you know, there's 20 guys there that can win. They've all got super good equipment. They're all very good race car drivers. So. And they're racing for big money. Yeah, you the, know. the schedule this year is ridiculous. Uh, the Staley's have done a really good job. I really wish that's something I could do one day, but yeah, I don't know. That's, like I said, I've raced every single one this year. I pay attention to all of them when I'm not racing. And uh, yeah, like, you know, they just had Super Nationals last week. The guys there are all badass, you know, so you people who kind of say one's better than the other don't really know what they're talking about so uh yeah they're all just as good and uh you know i love modified racing they put on a, a good show uh, no matter where they're at in the country well it is fan based on that talk you know most of the time um sometimes there's a big split between fans and, and the drivers on understanding the sport yeah. as well i think that's where i fly in you sometimes twitter people get sure. in you know yeah. they help them uh you said you won a ten thousand dollar win race last week you beat Nick Hoppin, which was yeah. the name of Modifieds. But he went on to late miles. Maybe that's why it didn't take as much, you know, clout yeah. for doing what you did. Even though that same night, I think Bobby Pierce won the uh, late miles for the same amount of money. Yeah. So it's 10000 What is the fans not understanding, maybe, whereas you've been doing these Modifieds for so long, you've been kicking ass, and you're just not going to late models for what reason? Is it is it a funding deal? I mean, yeah. is that is that basically what it comes down to? Because you see a lot of badass Modified yeah. guys just stay in modified yeah, it's uh it comes down to money that's all it is uh you know i think next year would be my 10th year mod racing if we continue to do that and uh we pretty much max out our budget to have you know the best equipment we can with the modified um you know i, I we could afford to move up to late models but it wouldn't be the way i want to do it you, you couldn't know? you couldn't win a race yeah i mean to, to even race here locally at fairberry you know you got to have a car that can win a ward outlaw race you know my, take mike spatola he races here every week he won uh the Yelena 100 the first night over at farmer city with the outlaws you know so just to even race locally, you got to have Outlaw Lucas type equipment. You know, that's just something we can't afford to do. Uh, you know, I've been fortunate enough to drive some different cars. I drove for a guy last year. Uh, I raced Frank Heck and S car earlier this year at Farmer City and did really well. So, obviously, that's my goal to go super late model racing. You know, it's a dream of mine to, to race late models for a living one day, just like everybody else. So, uh, yeah, we're just not in a position to, to be able to do that, and I don't really ever foresee being able to do that. So, it's just going to take uh, either some super big backers to, to kind of allow us to do it ourselves or, or try and get a ride with one of these teams one day so that's uh definitely the goal uh you know i have in mind i try and carry myself well and obviously your performances on the racetrack help so i just uh i try and do everything right to try and uh hopefully get a phone call one day so you're stuck in xfinity waiting for a cup ride technically because yeah. wouldn't you consider super late models the cup oh. of the 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 fendered uh dirt oval sure. racing you know uh, everybody wants to run super late models right everybody wants to be a uh, shannon babb brandon shepherd scott bloomquist whoever you know i, I want to race the world and there's some it. who maybe could afford it and are racing it that probably couldn't do as good as you as well those are out there just like in that cup world as yeah well. i mean i guess that's somebody else's opinion on that no, come on now you got to think that you're the best to perform well i mean yeah you, you, i mean it's uh like i said this, this whole deal uh, a lot of this is just mental you know you got to come in here and even if you're not you got to tell yourself you're better than these guys you worked harder than them and uh, you're going to go out there and out drive them so a lot of this stuff is mental 
Um, but you know, like, like I said, yeah, I, I want to be, I don't want to race mods forever. I want to go race the World 100, the Greater Classic, Knoxville, this and that. I want to go travel the country and uh, say I got to rest, race with the best of the best. I feel like I, I've kind of, uh, I've traveled the country a lot and like I said, I've raced every sanctioning body this year with modifieds and uh, you know, I'm hoping I'm kind of towards the end of my uh, career in mods and yeah, I, I really want to go late model racing, but I enjoy modified racing. Uh, you know, I've pulled double duty sometimes in a late model and a modified. And I really have a lot of fun driving the modified and we're able to make money with mod racing, which is, which is cool. Um, so yeah. Have you thought of doing the wheel crump and going USMTS for a year? We've, uh, we've thrown that around. Like, uh, th this car right here, it isn't legal to just throw tires and a spoiler on to, uh... What know. are some of those little differences that maybe, once again, the dumb yeah, man just, doesn't uh, know? Yeah, just, body's a big part of it. Uh, you know, tires, motor, um, small suspension stuff. Like, I just, I, I'd pretty much need a whole different race car to, to go do that deal for a weekend. And, uh, yeah, we've, uh, if they kind of keep that same schedule next year, I'd like to make my car legal enough to where, you know, it, it wouldn't be, you know, maybe not run the full tour, but pick and choose some races where I can go around. You know, I really enjoyed, uh, ran with them at, in Hamilton County, Iowa, and then I went and raced them at Cedar Lake for the Masters, and really enjoyed doing that. I just, uh, kinda, I've raced this UMP stuff for so long, I really just, uh, kind of get enjoyment out of leaving the house and, and going racing with some different guys so that's definitely uh you know if i can't if i can't race late models full time uh, you know usmt has to be the, the next best thing for sure for sure so that's uh that's something we've thrown around for next year we'll just uh, see how well see it does seem that. like there's more car owners now coming in supers if a guy's got an extra car they're throwing people in it seems like that's because of the increase in dirt just general and late models starting to pay so much more uh in, in different events across the country yeah uh you know i think dirt race right now is probably the best it's been in uh you know a, a long time as long as i've been alive you know i, I wasn't around obviously way back in the day to, to see how that was but i feel like dirt racing is thriving right now uh you know all these live broadcasts and stuff are uh, doing really well and just feel like everything on the internet's uh you know there i feel like there's a lot of hype right now in dirt racing and i feel like the sport's doing good and uh yeah, there's a lot of money up for grabs uh, in the late models and even the modifieds. You know, I raced for ten thousand dollars last week, and uh, there's there's money all over. You just gotta kind of go travel and find it, and uh, if you're competitive enough to, to go make some money. It's uh, all worth it. Outside the supers, have you got? I know Kyle Steppen's over there in a Silver Crown car. Have yeah. you got any any offers, any opportunities anywhere else outside of the Fender stuff? No, I'm midgets. Not. I mean, I'd love to. I mean, I, I've told you. You have the people. You know the yeah, people, obviously, yeah, with I, your little space that you sure, have. It, it all comes down to money. That's makes this world go around right so uh, which, I, one, which one would you prefer I'd, to run i'd love to run chili bowl uh I, i've always kind of told myself i feel like just the way i drive i feel like i'd be better in a midget or a non-wing sprint car compared to you know i think i'd be better in one of those than i am a modified or a late model just uh now we're we actually go back me and you sim racing yep. when i was kicking your no you <laughs> i was kicking that on this little 10 minute dirt tracking yep. over there larson we we actually were just talking over there um People, I think, do underestimate if, on that sim stuff how much it can matter. Yeah. Maybe not i racing or whatever, but it, it can matter. Now yeah. we saw the transitions Kyle's been able to make from wing cars to late models yeah. and all that. Even myself, I went from a game to faster than track champion first time on a track, yeah. hot lapping a car within six boat. laps. Yep. Somebody with Kyle's experience racing since he was five, coming and jumping to different cars, if he can mix that sim experience with the real world feel. To me, it's not really that surprising to see him jump around. Sure. Yeah, you know, uh, that's sim racing is how I learned how to race. I didn't grow up racing go-karts. or. Wait, so you learned how to race with me? Literally or you, me and you, you, you I taught you, you how to race? You my ass for so long, I finally figured it out. <laughs> Don't and, uh, say that. No, no. like I said, I, I didn't. That might up, be partially true. Yeah, though. I didn't <laughs> come up racing go-karts or, or nothing. I literally raced r on the computer for a handful of years, and I jumped into a street sock when I was 16, and literally the only racing experience I had was, uh, was r Factor. Uh, yeah, I won a national championship my third year in and been mod racing ever since. So, uh, sim racing's huge, like, especially for me, you know, not, not, not racing go-karts or nothing. You really just, uh, you know, I don't think the feel of anything really comes in a factor. It's really just learn how to race. You know, I'm there, race, I, learned, yeah. I learned how to look past my air cleaner and look, look like, I feel like in, in real life here, I'm, I'm very good through lap traffic and just looking past where you're supposed to be and, and dodging wrecks. Like, you'll never see my stuff tore up. And I feel like I learned a lot of that, uh, you know, sim racing. Well, sim racing, it was dodging wrecks was half the exactly. job. Like you know, so, you, so you, exactly like they so. say in flight simulators, they try to yeah. they throw all these things where you're supposed to yeah. crash, and yeah. that will get you so good that you don't crash in the real no, world. No, 100%. I mean, I feel like I've got a really quick reaction time, and I feel like a lot of that just comes from sim racing, just dodging idiots and kids, and you know, 
all this stuff on there. And learn how to throw slide jobs. Learn how to give guys room. Just learn your chase race. a guy, run yeah, a guy just, down, see where his yeah, line just, is better uh, than yours. Just learn your race, your race craft. I learned that all from my computer chair at a desk. And so. and comparing that to somebody who's just sitting going down the street. I mean, there's no other visual you're going to get than going around the track. Yeah. I mean. I would, if I had a kid, I'm not putting him in a race car until he can run a thousand laps yeah. clean in that simulator. No, I've, uh, there's been a lot of dads and young kids that came up to me and say, "Hey, man, I want to get my kid started in this and that." I'm like, "What do you think?" I'm like, "I didn't start nothing. I sat in a computer chair, you know, with a with a Logitech G25." Well, he's got to go so. run laps. You know, yeah. you don't want him to be fat as I was at one point. <laughs> you know, but, but but how do you think that transfers to Larson though? People are really impressed when he goes sprint car yeah. late model. I even feel like someone like you. If you threw you in a wing sprint car, gave him you know 60 laps at Cherokee or whatever. You would probably be pretty close just based on the simulation experience sure. you've had in the wing car. Sure. Yeah, no, it's uh, what Kyle, or the midget or sure. any of that. What Kyle's been able to do is cool. I've known Kyle for a long time. Back I to the sim racing days. Kyle's one of the first people on our factor I met. Uh, we were teenagers, and uh, you know, he was out on the West Coast, and I was in Illinois, so he was three hours behind me. So I'd stay up till you know three, four a.m. with just me and him, and you know it'd still be midnight his time. So uh, it's been fun to watch his career. I still remember. When he got a ride with Brett Katie in a sprint car, I remember at that time we thought that was like the biggest deal in the world. I remember so. when we was racing him and I turned to the back of Sprint Car Midget and it was like up and comer and it yeah. was Kyle Larson yeah. in the 83. Yeah. So it's been, you know, uh, it's been cool to, to watch his career. Like I said, I've seen every step of it. But uh, yeah, you know, I like to think I could jump in anything and be competitive. And uh, you know, I don't think that sim racing is not necessarily a, I don't know, a, a mirror for that or, or whatever. But, but for someone like Kyle's talent. It's definitely going to help him versus a Donny Shots. Oh, for sure. You know, that's what I'm yeah. saying. Like, those laps in that simulator in a dirt late model they, they don't, they go don't, a long way they, for someone with that talent. Sure. They don't hurt. You know, and the uh, the feeling you get on there is, is close enough. You know, if, if you're blind to, to go in and something in real life, that feeling, it gets close enough. So, uh, yeah, Kyle was kicking ass on there 10, 12 years ago. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been cool to see what he's done. And, uh, yeah, obviously his talent's uh, unreal. And, uh who knows? Uh, there's probably there might be another one out there. There might be not. Just uh, some. Maybe that guy is stuck running a UMP yeah, modified right, yeah. at Fairbury. Yeah. You could be the greatest race. Yeah. The, and this is my argument: the difference between a Mike McKinney who's got loads of talent, or another guy who's got loads of talent, is these little multi-million-dollar opportunities that Kyle Larson did did have. Sure. If Kyle Larson don't have those opportunities, he's David Gravel. Sure. No, or no. you know, that's just the reality. That's just the fact. Yeah, just oh my God. Oh my God! No, what? What? Why is he walking yeah. outside right now? He's got a lot of shit to fix. But... I'm working uh, on this race car. I ain't got time to do interviews. So. Oh well, somebody. Hey, somebody had to destroy the I race car. Yeah, I was thing. working on this thing earlier. Oh wow! Yeah. Has he got you on the the oh, dollar yeah, for the hour? Fix a little deck over there. But... Oh okay. What does he do? To just give you modified yeah, secrets? Yeah, it's a long one. Dude, That's the know, pay. So. That's the payment. Yeah. Okay. But no, obviously, Kyle. Even you or, or him? There he is, another guy right there. You yeah, know, that's that what I'm saying. Sense. I'm not diminishing Kyle. I'm just saying, don't forget about all these other guys. Yeah. Guys, no, and the difference uh, is, is that money opportunity. Yeah, I mean, Kyle will tell you he's been very fortunate to get the, the opportunity he's got. But um, you know, there are guys that get opportunities and they'll take advantage of it. You know, every every opportunity that Larson got, he went out and won and, and showed people. And he should. Yeah. It's not, he's not doing nothing wrong. Sure. I'm just saying. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you could be. I sure, mean, there's, yeah. there, if I yeah. could, whatever. I mean, it's just it's part of the sport. You know, if nobody calls me, nobody calls me. I can't control that. You know, like I said, I told you earlier, I try and handle myself well, talk to everybody, uh, you know, treat everybody the way I want to be treated, and just. Uh, try and go put on a show on the racetrack and like I said handle myself well and hopefully one day that impresses somebody I feel like that's all it takes I don't know what else I gotta do so uh, I think fans dictate the sport a lot you know yeah, they you know, they're who buys the t-shirt who buys the passes who buys flow whatever yeah. you know if they're looking at one guy is so higher and all these guys lower I'm just coming in saying hey the only reason you are looking up to this guy and, and down to these is because of this money and this opportunity sure. that these guys down here didn't get sure yeah. maybe they might have may, may not have done what he has done but you can't take the possibility out that they may have. Sure. You know. No, it's uh, you're right. I mean, everybody here tonight watching on flow is going to be want to be watching JD just won the World 100, Larson, Shepard. You know, they don't really care about these mod guys. You know, there's, there's people that go going to. Well, stay Kyle can't. Kyle can't say that no yeah, more. They're here to watch him now. Kyle you know. They want to watch Trickler or not? But <laughs> people don't want to watch mod just because it's typically a good show. You know, but if you want to watch the professionals and. Uh, the guys, but you are professional. Yeah, I mean, I, I treat it. I but know. people don't know that no. we're talking about the fans. Yeah. I, I I treat it like it's a uh, profession, you know. I, I I don't I work my stuff the same amount as uh, Strictly here or anybody else, you know. You so. put the little cover with the walkthrough slits, just like a NASCAR right. team. Like I mean, I, like I said, I, I I try and carry myself as well as I can, and just uh, treat everybody the way I I want to be treated. And 
I'm not too big and look like an idiot on or off the racetrack. Well, so. if dirt rises, we need stars. Yeah, you know, so you could my, be one. You know, I, we don't we don't need to keep sending our guys to asphalt sure. to be stars. I mean, what Supercross guys saying I need to go to MotoGP to be a superstar? Yeah, none of them. None of them. No. So what what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, I don't know. Like that. At the end of the day, I, I enjoy racing and have fun. And uh, yeah, obviously it's a it's a dream to, to do it full time for somebody one day. If it, if it works out, it works out. If it don't, I'll uh, I'll go find something else. Well, to do, so. at least we both have something in common. We're both prettier than Kyle Strickland. That's a hundred percent. That 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 that's our looks are gonna take.